Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. We're here at Wikibon headquarters, and this is the Cube's breaking analysis of the big news of the day, which, of course, didn't come as a surprise to anybody, but Lenovo, the number one PC maker, is buying IBM's x86 server business for $2.3 billion, $2 billion in cash, and the rest in Lenovo stock. IBM is currently the number three x86 uh, server supplier uh, and behind uh, uh, Dell and HP, or HP and Dell in that order. And with me here to discuss this uh, at the Wikibon offices is Stuart Miniman, uh, uh, principal contributor and analyst at the Wikibon project, and also David Floyer, the chief technology officer. David's out in Mountain View. Gentlemen, welcome and thanks for coming on. Thanks, Dave. So as I said, this is a uh, $2.3 billion acquisition of a company. So IBM's revenues in this area are $4.6 billion. So that's about uh, 50 cents on the dollar. If you looked at Dell before Dell went private, Dell was trading at about uh, at a valuation of about 40 cents uh, on the dollar. Lenovo was trading at about 40 cents on the dollar. So they're paying a premium relative to the big PC companies. Uh, but Stu, why did IBM make this move, and is it a good move? Yeah, so, so Dave, as you said, this wasn't a surprise to anyone. Uh, if, if we've been watching the x86 business, overall it's been shrinking, and IBM has really been hit on this. Um, the, you know, the two big growth, uh, you know, areas for this environment have been uh, really kind of the web scale companies, where the ODMs, those Taiwanese companies, have really been taking a big chunk of the market. And, uh, the, you know, the only exception to uh, kind of the, the shrinking of the market has been Cisco. Cisco's really gone after what was traditionally IBM's, you know, sweet spot in the market, which was the performance area. You know, I think back, you know, IBM really created the blade server market. Uh, they were the leader in that space for a long time, but, you know, HP came on strong. Uh, Cisco then took a big chunk out of them, and, and IBM just hasn't been able to recover. Um, what, what's surprising is, that, you know, the breadth that this does affect. Uh, you know, Dave, we were at the IBM Pure Systems launch, and the Flex Systems, which is just the, you know, standard compute architecture, you know, converged environment for um, you know, virtualization and, and all x86 environments are all going to Lenovo. What IBM keeps is the power systems, uh, the pure application, the pure data, but, you know, and, and of course they're keeping their storage, but, you know, all of the x86 is all going to Lenovo. So IBM moving up the stack, is it a good move in your view? Yeah, I, so I, I think it is a good move. I'm not sure how IBM competes. It really needs to be, you know, through software, which IBM continues to have, uh, and, you know, cloud services and other solutions that they can build. And I think it gives IBM some more flexibility, and IBM just didn't have, uh, you know, low enough margins and have, uh, you know, a differentiating solution. So it makes sense, just like they did in the PC business, once again, to sell it off to the Chinese. Yeah, so David, uh, IBM sold its PC business for, uh, in 2005, for about 1.25 billion has obviously been very successful with that. You're not uh, as happy about this this deal from IBM's perspective. Why not? No, I'm not. I was very much in favor of the uh, selling off of the PC business. I thought that was a very smart move, and in uh, in retrospect, has been a fantastic move as the margins and the volumes of the PC business have gone down, and, and Lenovo has increased its market share and increased its efficiency and its ability to in the silent the Asian markets enormously. So uh, from Novo, Le, Levono's point of view, this is a good deal. From IBM's point of view, in my opinion, this is a, is a good short-term deal, but a, a very uh, big strategic mistake uh, in where computing, system computing in general is going. Uh, where it's going is towards uh, uh, completed uh, converged infrastructure with the hardware and the software and the storage and the networking all together in one box. And uh, this uh, makes them unable effectively to compete in this area. They can compete on software, but they need other people to put together the hardware and the software. So they cannot complete the com uh, make a complete stack except at the very high end. And that is the end which is under most, will be under most pressure over the next few years. So in, in my view, they had to take a strategic uh, look at this, and they needed to blend in the storage, make it a platform to enable them to sell their software more efficiently and more effectively into the marketplace, and use it, use it that way as a way of driving out costs, getting economies of scale, 
driving out maintenance costs on the software. And the way they're going now, they are going to be only able to provide their software as part of other people's stacks, and that will give them very little leverage indeed in the future. So let me follow up on that. So your basic premise is that the world is going to converge infrastructure. You've got to own that system in order to compete uh, most effectively. IBM, by giving up its x86 business, only, only leaves its uh, proprietary power series, and, and I presume you're, you're arguing that IBM doesn't have the volume uh, to compete and be cost effective in that area. Is that a correct uh, interpretation of your premise? Correct. Okay, so now, why can't IBM do what others do and just buy in the piece parts and put it together? I mean, well, I guess Oracle kind of does that, right? Oracle doesn't, you know, manufacture it, certainly its own x86 s systems. I mean, it sort of does. It incorporates uh, x86. You know, Cisco, you know, buys Intel chips. D does IBM really have to be in the low-end server business to compete for converged infrastructure? Well, when you're looking at converged infrastructure on the server side, you need to, the, the chips are the, are the common element. You buy those from Intel. What is different is how you put the recovery systems together, how you blend that in with the storage. It's the, all of the uh, microcode, all of the recovery systems. Those are unique to each individual server vendor. And there are a lot of chips that go into it other than the Intel chips themselves. So, uh, that's the piece that they will not be in control of. Somebody else will be in control of that total architecture. We'll put together the storage and the server and the networking as a complete package. And that means that they have no way of owning a whole stack. They can't buy in the piece part because they won't own the uh, microcode and everything else. They won't be able to put together that total stack. The people who will be able to do that are obviously HP and Dell. And Lenovo, uh, I would see that Livono will be going into the uh, storage market to uh, complete these uh, these deals. Well, Lenovo has a deal with uh, with EMC, of course, and don't don't forget Oracle. Oracle, obviously, well, is, and, and actually, as, as part of this deal, Lenovo will actually be selling IBM storage. So that that does put into question how much the EMC Lenovo storage deal is going on, because that was part and parcel of this x86 deal. Is there will be a strong partnership between IBM and Lenovo. IBM is going to continue to uh, you know work on you know Windows and Linux development, and work and they're going to you know use Lenovo x86 as one of their piece parts. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think they're, you know, pushing it off and saying we're not going to touch it, and now Lenovo's going to sell the storage. Yeah, so, I mean, th this deal obviously was uh, the head of the, the IBM server and software business is Steve Mills. He's a software guy. Uh, in my view, he's never really, you know, loved hardware. He's not hated it, but he's like a mainframe, et cetera. But he's a software guy, and, he's, and, this, and the x86 business has always been a low-margin uh, you know, soar for, for IBM. So I, I think I think Mills looked at this uh, and and sort of disagreed with you, David. Said strategically, we got to get rid of this and focus on 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 software and obviously services. S Stu, what's your take on the converged infrastructure piece? It's a it's an area that you follow quite closely. What, what do you think about Floyer's premise? Yeah, so so you know, it, it's that counterbalance. So you know, I understand what David's saying, and obviously HP's done a great job of bringing their server and their storage groups together. Uh, IBM hadn't done a great job with that. Um, Dell, it's interesting if I look at them from a converged standpoint, they actually sell. Dell servers into a lot of converged platforms. Uh, they're the primary partner for SimpliVity, and there's other hyper-converged platforms that leverage, uh, you know, Dell x86. But uh, you know, I, I really think that you know IBM can do more in software uh, to be able to pull that together, and that they don't need to own their own x86. They can partner closely with Lenovo, and also have choice to use others. Uh, you know, interesting discussion we've been having out in the the social spaces is if you look at IBM Cloud, has there been too much of an incentive inside to use use IBM servers for cloud, which might slow them down and hurt their overall margins. And if they get that business out, that frees them up to do uh, a lot more with it. So, you know, I, I think this is overall a good thing for IBM. Um, they really don't, as you said, want to be a hardware company. It's their services and their software, and they've got a robust software portfolio. IBM's uh, server business has been in decline. It declined, you know, double digits last quarter and has been on, on, on the skids. Uh, uh, the IBM CEO mentioned on the last conference call that they have a new mainframe coming out in 2015, and that should help shore up, you know, the the hardware business. I, I found that uh, that that interpretation of that comment is is 
a little bit concerning. We're going to wait till 2015 for a new mainframe to shore up our hardware business. David, does this mark the beginning of the end of IBM as a leader in systems and hardware? Totally, to me. Uh, the, the way that it's going, uh, I mean, clearly they're making a loss on this, uh, on this uh, part of their business. And I understand the pressures on that. And clearly the, they give them a 20% over the odds on, uh, on selling it. But this is very short term. Uh, in my view, if you, when you look at what Amazon is doing with the combination of software and hardware, they're investing hard into hardware. And they're investing hard into the whole infrastructure working as a single unit. And they're investing in taking out costs of the application running on that hardware, all the way up the stack. Um, that is the model that's going to work. And uh, IBM service business, unless it adopts a similar model and it owns the whole of that stack, I don't believe we'll be able to compete effectively long term with uh, with Amazon and other Amazon lookalikes, which will come into the into that business. So it's very interesting, so, David. You're putting forth the notion of Amazon as a, as a server supplier. Stu, thoughts on that? Yeah. So so uh, you know, Dave, Dave, I wrote a big article talking about the, you know this point that David's making. You know, Amazon is really focusing on hyper specialization. They've got people you know working on power supplies and all the pieces. Um, so uh, the, the counterpoint, I guess, I would make is that you know IBM really looks at open source as one of their, you know, key strong points. They want to differentiate on execution. They want to use open source projects. Amazon leverages a lot of open source, but doesn't contribute back to the community. Um, there was a big article uh, just, just written this week um, on the register talking about Amazon's actually losing uh, some of their, you know, key engineering people because they don't contribute back to the open source community. So, you know, I, I think this is very di uh, diametrically opposed views of what Amazon's doing and what IBM's doing. Uh, IBM and wants to leverage the open source and therefore getting rid of their own x86 helps them to do that. Well, event. what about that, David? Next week we're going to be at the OCP Summit. I'm, I'm hosting a fireside chat with uh, some folks uh, from, from Merck, OCP, and uh, George Schlesman at I.O. You're going to be there. What about that? Can, uh, can IBM leverage its open source mojo and with initiatives like OCP actually replicate the capabilities of Amazon and focus more on cloud and, and jettison some of those financial losers? What do you think about that? Well, they could if they were able to put together that whole cloud strategy on their own hardware and open source software. I, I agree with you completely that they've got a great mojo with the open 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 uh, uh, open software. That's a great strength that they have. But the whole point that I'm getting at is it has to be a vertically integrated stack to be cost effective to drive out costs. You have to have volume all the way through. And if you don't own it, and you need other people to service it, or you need other people to provide it, that won't work. So you're, are you implying that initiatives like OCP, because they're, 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 they're an ecosystem built approach, won't be able to compete with fully integrated stacks? Not at all. The OCP is a fully integrated stack. And, and if you integrate that, for example, with, with OpenStack itself, you can create from that, or people will be able to create from that, a total stack. But they've got to own all the pieces. And uh, if you try to get into it with bit parts, you'll be a bit part player. And you, your margins are going to be increasingly under pressure over the, the next decade. This is not going to roll out in a, in a year or, or, or two years. This pressure on IBM and, and the, uh, uh, their move away from systems to a pure service player with a little bit of software they can sell to other people, I think, in my view, is a strategic mistake. Okay, we got to leave it right there. Thank you, David Floyer and Stu Miniman. This has been Breaking Analysis. I'm Dave Vellante with Wikibon. Check out siliconangle.com for all the news, Wikibon for all the research, and watch the Cube. We'll be at uh, Palo Alto uh, next week in Silicon Valley at the OCP Summit and also uh, the OpenStack event down at the Mountain View Computer Museum. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.